everyone. Welcome back to another episode of uh, The Raven's Voice. This is uh, Tiersen, of course, and with me, as usual, is Zealous. Hey, everyone. And tonight, we have a special guest. Uh, you'll know him from ACL as Zenos Paradox. He goes by Sash. Uh, he is a player over on the 360 side, and uh, we're going to give him a couple choice words tonight. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, what do you say after that? Um, this is, unfortunately, this is my last show. Um, you know, as, as you saw, the topic was, uh, you know, do, uh, do we get rid of Tearson because he is such a new, uh, we, we answered this before the show. This was, this was evident really. I mean, this was not a real question, of course. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm too much of a noob, so, uh, they're going to find somebody else. Um, if you, if you're believing this and you have not been listening to the show very long. But, uh, no, we, we will get into that a little bit. We'll talk about uh, part of the reason why Zenos is on was a little bit of back and forth. Nothing uh, nothing too drama horrific or anything, but a little bit of back and forth uh, from last week's show to this one. Uh, between uh, between him and I, a couple, uh, couple words were said. And again, nothing too serious, but we're going to talk about that a little bit legitimately. Uh, we, have, we have some views on that stuff. But before we get into all that, and then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and then, of course, we have the main topic of the night. Uh, combat and tactics in Armored Core Verdict Day. Uh, a lot to touch on this. You know, little, you know, basically things to think about. You know, when you're building your AC, that maybe just right aren't there in front of you while you're actually building it. But you know, as far as like, you know, how's this going to work? How's that function? How will this actually play out in free battle or in world mode? Uh, a lot of the things that you know, like, again, aren't right there in front of you when you're building your AC, but things that are obviously very important in. Um, so we're going to talk about that. It's going to be the main topic of the night. Uh, as usual, though, uh, you know, we have a lot of plugs here. We always do our plugs. Oh, yeah. So if you have not yet, and I don't know why you haven't, you should definitely go to armorcorelegacy.com, sign up for the forums. Uh, it is the uh, most active forums out there for Armor Core right now, and uh, hopefully it will, that will not change as we try very hard to keep that a great place for, uh, for the fans of the game to go. Uh, if you want to email us anything, uh, send it to ravensvoiceacl at gmail.com and uh all right so i think I, we have a couple events that we want to talk about tonight before we get into everything else um let's see we talked about this last week we're a little late on getting this one out this has been up on the forums a little bit but uh and you know this is going to be really interesting to see how this plays out uh there's going to be a design contest uh why don't you tell us a little bit about this else sure our contest with the drac i remember right correctly right it would get a Queen Drac Wrath, and he might just be under Drac Wrath in some places. I, I can't remember, but definitely his name is usually of that, uh, that type of wherever you go in the forums. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is a uh, design contest that an idea that Drac sparked. You know, it actually started in uh, a thread, and it was, I'm forgetting the exact thread, but it had to do with uh, design, design aesthetics and essentially uh, the beauty of an AC or who could. Uh, you know, come up with a really aesthetically pleasing design or what could be posted. But anyway, it's, it's, turned, it's turned into an actual event um, that he'd like to host. So this event, I believe, was... We didn't get a chance to sticky this one yet, did we? This was in... Uh, no, this is not sticky yet. What's up with that? You know, I should probably just sticky right now. Yeah. I think that it's just going to be judged by aesthetics. I believe we had any technicals in that, did we, Tarson? There are no aesthetics. technicals to this. No, this didn't. is all about being pretty. So if you have a paint scheme, if you have emblems, if you have decals, whatever you like to completely trick your AC out and you think it's the most awesome thing in the world, come show it, come participate, and see if you can give Drac a different definition of what beauty of an AC is. This is for fans of the new games uh, or golden era of, uh, of Armored Core, AC3 through Last Raven, or even going further back, uh, it looks like he's holding it for AC1 through Master of Arena, AC2 in another age, all of them, even Armored Core. Four and four answer, which why waste your time? But you can do that there too. So, but uh, yeah, you know it's it's in our, it, on ACL.com. It's uh, or Armor Court Legacy. I kind of to say uh, it's in the tournaments and events section. Um, yeah, I mean if uh, you know again if uh, how you make your AC look is uh, is the most important thing to you, or if you just you know back in the day if you had some great looking ACs and you always wanted an opportunity to show them off and actually get judged for them. Uh, is there, you know, pretty cool. Um, 
you know, I might enter into this. I, I typically don't have the time, especially with the retro games, to go back and uh, just kind of do something like that. But, it, you know, the community is full of retro fans. And it is also for AC5 and Verdict Day as well. So, um, you know, they, yeah, you know, pretty neat. Uh, this is something that's talked about often, you know, actually kind of going back to uh, to last week's show where a lot of people, they they do care. You know, aesthetics is something that they that they think about. And I, I, it's, it's an interesting dynamic for me just to think about, okay, well, what if I just care about how my arm recorder looks? I mean, that, that is kind of weird. Uh, kind of hard for me not to think about it with, uh, with how it performs. But, yeah, but there it is. Pretty neat. And okay. No, what's that? And our second event, I'm just going to ballpark this. I'm going to assume that's War for November. War for November. Uh, you know, this I think was just posted here in the last couple of days over at uh, Army Corps Legacy over on our forums. Uh, this is an event that uh, ACL is putting on. Uh, it's very interesting in you know just just how it's going to work. It's not going to be some kind of uh, tournament or exhibition. This is actually going to go for the entire month of November. Uh, it's, it's a point system where. Uh, you know, give you the general rules. You should go to, uh, again, go to armorcordlegacy.com to get the specifics on this. Um, basically, and this is PS3 side only. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the, and, uh, and Sash, sorry. This, uh, we don't, we don't oh, have, come on. Yeah, we don't have any stats. <laughs> I mean, we miss out on all kinds of events. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, out, out of the seven players that play in the Xbox side, none of us are actually <laughs> <PS>. <laughs> No, but um, no. This is interesting. You know, uh, we've been talking about this one for a little bit, and uh, Chang's going to be rolling this one out. He's heading this one up. Um, it's a point-based system, whereas you know we'll be we'll be murking out there in uh, in in the game. And if you get us in your team, or if we're in your opposing team, is if you have us in, in your team and you win, and, and you win the bat, you win the battle in world mode, you get a point. And if we're in the opposing team and you beat us, you get a point. And so at the end of the month, uh, whatever team has the most points wins. And there are prizes. There are some uh, some PSN cards. Uh, looks like there's some model kits out there as well. Uh, I believe he has all the details on the forums. But uh, nothing like this has been done before. And it's it's very interesting to see how this is going to work out. You know, the I think the Merc side of events, it's usually something people do for... Uh, if anything, just, just for fun or uh, to go out and just kind of hang out with some of the community. You know, most of the events have centered around uh, free battle play or some of the battle royales or 1v1s and some of the team matches or whatnot. But uh, uh, this should be a fun chance to kind of break, I think, to the traditional mold for that. And, uh, it, heck, it's a fun trial, too. We're going to see how it goes. Sounds like a fun. So this will be pretty much staff members of ACL. If you find us out there, it's myself and Zealous, mm-hmm. Chang, uh, I believe Cleric as well. Um, if you actually get cleric in your team, you should get an extra point just because of how rare that is. Yeah, that's a dig at you, cleric. I know you'll listen to it. Then also, uh, a couple, a couple others as well. He deserves it. <laughs> he, he deserves it. Um, you'll have uh, the Avalons out there, and I believe. Uh, oh God, I don't want to say his name wrong here. I know, um, I know what you want to say, but Rick's Max. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Max, uh, he's going to actually be making a different account uh, because he actually, that's right, he does play in the 360 side. Or I, I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that, but he's going to have a different account by that. Uh, so there will be six. Oh, I think that that clerk is not in the list. This is how much I pay attention to this stuff. <laughs> so <it's- laughs> that, that is so rare that he's not in the list. So Chang, Avalon, myself, Tearson, Zels, and. Uh, uh, he'll be going by Rancher Passing By. If you get us in your team uh, and you've registered your team for this event, that's the thing. You got to come. You have to come to the forum and you have to register your team for this. Uh, you get the most points in a month, and you're going to win some prizes. Okay, yeah, so like you guys will be having a lot of fun. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's what you get for getting an Xbox. <laughs> and you have a little fun digging, uh, digging at the Xbox players. For, you know, us, us older people who just love the uh, the retro AC so much, it's a little jaded that they they split the consoles like that because it really did put a, it, it did put a genuine gap in the community. So yeah, it certainly did. Okay, so so yeah, let's uh, let's talk about Zealous. Let's let's, let's just go right there. Uh, Sash here mm-hmm. took a dig at us last week. <laughs> we had our thread. It was in. Let's see. Uh, theorycraft in the Armored Corps, uh, at the end of it, there was just a note about uh, 
uh, a little bit of just discontentment about how I think some of our topics are approached, how I think sometimes it's just related that there's a uh, disconnect between uh, how we present Armored Core 5 mechanically or our understanding of, of what's based there. And if anything, Sasha, just want to you know, just give you a chance to just expound upon a few things there. And uh, I suppose some of the some of the talk you felt was missing or some of the things uh, you wished you could see personally or wish you could hear. Right. Well, I mean, really on specifics here, you just, uh, it, it comes down to your general knowledge of, you know, how frames are built, how people, you know, get these defense thresholds, which you generally talk very vaguely about, mm -hmm. um, as well as just how, I guess, uh, general weapon setups are covered, how people, you know, you, you, t you cover... Uh, how people, you know, choose a light type, make a build. You don't say how they equip that build or how, how you know, tactics are used. We say, oh my gosh, you know, we all we all hate sawas and my fangs. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, who uses these? You know, how are they used? What builds? Um, I don't know. It's just the the general technical know how. I mean, I don't want to point fingers, but of course, uh, it's unless you yourself are an avid quad user and it doesn't seem like you use much else. Mm -hmm. And Tiersen over here is, uh, well, he's Tiersen. <laughs> I'm, I'm me, and that's it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I think it's great to have this brought up. And uh, this is a sentiment we've heard, you know, we've heard mentioned before, but we haven't really had a chance to gain any form of definition to. You know, uh, coming into this and coming into any topic that we do, um, it's always a tricky approach because you know, sometimes it's a, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation uh, as far as what's presented. On, on the one hand, um, occasionally we want, we want to keep things, actually most of the time, keep things broad enough as though uh, to encompass a large audience. Uh, for example, you may have someone listening that's maybe it's just their first experience with Armored Core, or they're looking at things from an outer perspective, or if we're just covering a topic and there's more ideological standpoints within said thread that we want to cover, but there, there are many topics that we have mentioned more on a superficial, more on a surface level that we have not delved completely in depth with. And, and it's interesting too, that there's an idea of when those points are brought up that it can give a notion that we may not have the full grasp of that part of the game. Okay, there's, let's face it, sure, there's parts we can definitely work on uh, with our game and everything, but I think uh, to also go there is, in a, is a broad assumption, um, an assumption because said point isn't made that that knowledge isn't known. And I genuinely believe that's not the case. Um, in fact, 99% of the time, you know, a lot of these things and the specifics, you know, we're um, blessed with some members we had in the community, like uh, our our streamers and such as Godly Perfection and whatnot. We haven't heard from him in a bit, um, but a lot of these technicalities, right, and a lot of the technical gameplay are shown literal, literally, you know, through streams and whatnot. And we have people doing live commentary and some of the talks therein, or some of the videos posted, you know, footage from tournaments. Uh, some of this comes to the limit of an audio format, you know, a podcast for AC. This, this wasn't out there before, you know, it wasn't something that that we had for the community. And uh, another big line of assault that we always had coming against us when we first uh, began this was people saying, hey, you need to put video, it needs to be video footage, you know, in here. And we experimented with this a little bit, but th the problem is that breaks the format. It ultimately destroys what we're, what we're aiming for with this project and the way we present it and the way we come across. Um, if anything, the instructional style of Armored Core and what we have presented, you know, it's, it's pretty cool because you have a big community, uh, at least a niche community rather, uh, made up of uh, many different forums, you know, Region Perfection, ACL, um, ACU, uh, I think uh, ACG, all these spots are places that contribute to this pool of knowledge, right? And that's kind of what we all come together and build off of to gain a bit of a continuum and a pool of knowledge to, you know, move off of and go forward. It's never a solo effort. I think that's the important thing to recognize here. And I also hope we can come out of this with the recognition that because certain points may not be made or may not be voiced on said topic or the way someone would want to perceive those things as voiced doesn't mean that they aren't known and that that knowledge is not the case and um that's part of what we're going to delve into with our uh, with our topic here uh tonight you know we uh simplified the name a bit i think uh tierson we were initially talking about this i uh i, I can't remember what i'd propose for it but oh geez we had so much <laughs> it was it was almost like writing an essay for this thing but you know we 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 tried to present this simply and um a lot of it comes back to this community standpoint. You know, the uh, I'll be posting a link to this as well. The base reason for why uh, this topic came up is actually a post from a community member by the name of Avenger. So a lot of you are probably remember Avenger during uh, Foreign FA. 
Uh, he actually made this post on ACG about a year ago, a little over a year ago. It was in uh, April 2012. And uh, he just had a note about the community and how information's handled. You know, we're, we're pretty interested in this. Like, we have a dynamic with AC5 now with Teams, right? And naturally that, that puts the information sharing in, in a different light. You know, you, we officially have kind of like a forum in-game for a team and for a team to build off of. So I want to read a little bit of his post because this is honestly where the whole idea came from. And I just want to base this a little bit uh, before we go deeper into the topic later and before we talk about more of it and get into some specifics about mechanics. So um, this is just part of Vendor's post. And I'm just going to cruise through it. Uh, he says that you have to understand that a lot of people in ACG are old school Ravens back when community was more important than competitive. People would share knowledge and whoever could make better use of that knowledge was the better player. It wasn't treated like a war where information was kept secret other than to a few trusted allies. He goes on to say that basically older players realized it was just a game and there was no sense in everyone, everyone wasting time to learn the tricks to win. I remember when people were offended on FA or downright astounded when I was teaching them advanced tricks. Really? Are people that obsessed over winning a game? Is it really so important that you always win or on a competitive standpoint? And do you, do you think that you guys have little chance of winning if you don't hoard information? Whether or not my name could get me a pass with some people, I'm not interested in a community like that, and I'm amazed how many people perpetuate it. So there's there's a lot of discontentment here. You know, this is something I think he was pretty vocal about. Bear in mind, uh, we had a bit of a community breakage during the FA era. In a sense, it was there was a lot of <laughs> ambiguity. But <laughs> you and FA, you had a note about that, Tearson? Oh, I'm just yeah, yeah, just a little bit of a break in the community. <laughs> More than one, I think that's probably even dumbing down the language for it. You know, it was we had a big rift, and uh, you know, this was a time where I think a lot of players left or uh, just really toned down their playing or just weren't around. I know myself, I was not a very big part of the forums at all. I would, uh, I check out forums, I check out posts, I go around in the spots, but I did, definitely didn't interact um, as I did in the past. So, looking at this line of thought, I think especially the, the first thing that the Avenger presents here about. Um, info being treated like a war, how it's kept secret, is it not kept secret, is it open and whatnot, you know, it's been fun. You can go around to multiple forums today, especially reaching perfection and um, you know, on ACL and I think it, as well as in Mechaverse, which I'm not sure where that went, the, that web, spots, web space is still down. Um, there would be threads, you know, you'd, almost like miniature FAQs, okay, that would have different aspects of, of gameplay posted and, and they're still there. Uh, the defensive mechanics for vanilla AC5, you know, to talk about some of the, the current weapons that we deal with today and those things, they're there. Okay, that information is posted and that information is public. But um, I want to pass the, tape, pass the note around the table here a bit to, to Sash. You know, you were saying um, that before coming in the show, you, don't really, you didn't really have a team that you're a huge part of right now just because it's a really small community, right? But um, how do you feel that, like, information sharing, like, how's that how do you feel that's changed in AC5? Like, do you think having the team structure has enhanced that? Do you think it's spurred teams on to keep those things uh, more within certain circles? Do you think uh, things are communicated better better in the community, or do you think people are just silent on this stuff? How do you think it sits? Uh, I, I feel that the the change the, the the team setup has definitely made it so that it's both extremes have been rather rather prominent. Like, you can see that there's there's certainly some people that will like stagger mechanics, for example, were not exploited until very late in the the AC5 lifespan, at least on the Xbox side. Mm -hmm. And that knowledge was more or less uh, definitely kept secret. Uh, there were people like when we finally like we we would catch on that certain combinations of weapons would do something you know very extraordinary, and we would not be able to explain it. Mm -hmm. And then when we figured it out for ourselves, you know, why would somebody keep this information from us? Well, right. It's certainly at least from the, the new competitive standpoint of it, of having these teams is that people want to play mm -hmm. for the benefit of you know, their team, their territory. And to do that, that would be to win as easily as possible, of course. Mm -hmm. And you can see that uh, certainly uh, well, like with, with the, the lamp eye technique, for example, where you pair a lamp with an oxide together to mm -hmm. one, uh, do high DPS and then two, cause armor breaks that said DPS would be more effective. You know that was that was definitely safeguarded knowledge. Like you couldn't see that a whole lot, but at the same time, like once a member figured that out, 
they would spread it to their team almost immediately. They'd say, "Hey guys, you know this is really great," and you could see that with the uh, like uh, initially in the game, the the cookie cutter ACs were all the rage. Of course, we had the as we called them, zealous uh, chickens, <laughs> and those those just appeared all over the place. You know, we had people. You know, you'd see it in ranked, you'd see it in free, you'd see it in conquest. You know, that would be all the thing. And of course, it was overpowered, but at the same time, it was the communication of the community saying, "Hey, this is." Yeah, this is a big deal. Let's all hop in on this. Right, right. You know, it, it's funny because, I mean, you know, looking at things with Verdict Day now, it, it seems like information is shared a lot more than it was in AC5, even in Verdict Day's uh, short lifespan so far. Uh, you know, do you think some of that has to do with the fact that, uh, you know, it, and it's kind of ironic because we talk about hoarding information during 5 uh, mm-hmm. for what was actually in all intents and purposes, a very broken system in Conquest and actually not even a real fun one. But we we do have a world mode now that uh, in Verdict Day that works a lot better, but we do see information sharing uh, is, is a lot more uh, robust uh, than it was already. And so it's kind of funny that the, the parallel is there. Do you think that it, um, maybe some people caught on that hoarding this kind of stuff and just the fact that, you know, with Conquest and how poorly Conquest was in 5 and just how many people gave up on the game, do you think that people overall have found that it's better to just share this information because it's better, it'll better the it'll better the player base. And by bettering them, you'll be able to take on more people and have more fun. I think you're, you're certainly right on that point. But in, in V-Day, we have to understand that we have such, such a wide array of weaponry at our disposal, and most of these are very, very versatile. And while they, there are certainly classes of weapons that do certain things better than others, we have, in, in the rifle category, we have a weapon with like 18 reload, and then we have one ranging from 90, and you know all varieties of attack powers, etc., and all, all, sorts, all sorts of other handling characteristics. And in... In five, we really didn't have that. We had maybe one or two weapons in each category that were definitely better than all the others. And you know, with with the knowledge hoarding bit, we could discover you know one or two that would suddenly be you know considerably more useful. Like for the longest time, people would use Dakosas, mm-hmm. you know, high damage, quick fire, and BR, but it didn't have a lot of muzzle. And then when somebody switched to a Lotus, which was a very high accuracy, high muzzle velocity weapon that walked on it quickly, mm-hmm. you know, on the other side of the coin people would be like, oh my goodness, you know, we need to all pounce on this. This is a great weapon. <laughs> and it's it's certainly different in, in V-Day, but very much in 5, to your point, um, people just started, once they started sharing this, it was both, like, even if you didn't want it to be shared, if you fought against somebody who was using that sort of weapon, and you were at least paying attention during that fight, you know, yeah. you'd see, hey, that's a Lotus. Why is that guy running a Lotus? Oh, mm-hmm. because he has dual subcomputers, and Lotus has good muscle velocity, and I just got destroyed by that. I'm going to use that now. And I'm going to tell my friends, I'm going to tell my team. My team is going to disperse that information, and then suddenly everyone's running Lotuses. You know, I'm, I'm going to just interject myself here for a minute, because we are, without meaning to, we are spilling right into the middle of this main topic, which we didn't want to hit until the second half of the show. So, what I'm going to do here real quick, uh, because I did forget to bring something up, and we're going to go to break, and then we'll get all over this. Is that okay with you guys? That's yeah. probably fine with me, yeah. Okay, all right. One thing I forgot to bring up uh, for the other six Xbox players, you guys do know that <laughs> you got you got a patch today. Why, yes, yes, we did. Why you got the patch first? I don't know. It pisses me right off. But uh, there is a patch coming out, um, and obviously for Xbox, like I just said, you already got it. But for the PS3 players, uh, we are getting a patch on the 22nd, which I do believe is Tuesday, uh, fixing some problems. Some of those problems we'll probably bring up in the second half of the show. Some uh, you know, we're talking a little bit about weapons and what people leaned to right away, and obviously the more powerful ones, and in some cases, things that needed to be nerfed. And that's a lot of what's coming out with this uh, with this patch. But patch on Tuesday for the PS3 players. Um, okay, so with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and then uh, we've just kind of found ourselves right in the middle of this topic already, and we will continue on the other half. All right, stay tuned. Okay, 
welcome back, everybody, to the Ravens Voice. Uh, we're talking about combat and tactics in our record, particularly with Verdict Day. Uh, Zealous uh, still here. Hey, how you doing? And, uh, and we have Sash from uh, 360 side. Still present. <laughs> there you go. All right, so, um, you know, we're again, we're talking about combat and tactics in the game. More along, of, more along the lines, not so much of, you know, picking uh, which parts and such, but, uh, you know, more in depth to that, I guess, uh, but not so specific, is uh, tactics and, and how you use these things and, and tricks to, to winning battles, uh, be it free battle or be it in, in teams. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, I'm going to... You know, we, we talked about this a little bit during the break, a little bit before the show, and you guys really uh, you guys really have good conversations going on about this. So I'm going to just kick you off in a direction, and then uh, you guys go nuts about it. So uh, let me get you started on just some you know some basic some basic tactical stuff that you know to think about and to and to perform when you're when you're playing. All right, fire away. Okay, all right. That, I was just going to send you off in that direction. Um, okay, well, let's just uh, let's talk about defenses. Uh, and in particular, you know, defense is about the same from May Z5, but they did get tweaked a bit with Verdict Day. You know, I, I think one of the first things we saw with Verdict Day was a little bit uh, more of a streamlining with some of the defenses. And by that term, you know, and as, some of this came from, you know, the retrofitted parts to allow you to uh, achieve a slightly greater balance of what you were looking for. You know, you, you go back and you look at the original... Uh, information we have for defenses so for five and, and a lot of things are similar such as you know when you perform uh, your armor break you know and staggering someone into you know, leaving them open for a stronger hit uh, for the next attack when you, you know, you're able to have your power exceed their defense threshold you know a lot of those things are still in place but damage has come in line uh, to a point to a degree you know it's not anything radical where it's just overhauled everything back to the shell and ener- uh, shell and energy stone age so to speak but um, it's still something really important to look at, still something interesting. Um, and that's obviously, you know, part of your designing process. Uh, in particular, you know, some of the thresholds you might be hitting. Um, when you're, you know, looking specifically like KETC, you know, what to spec against. Uh, for some of you, I'm sure this comes down to a team issue. Uh, maybe some of the things, you know, you're encountering or the different gaps you're looking to fill in, you know, with your team or where you're looking. Uh, likely, though, this is going to be something you're going to look at as to what you're encountering with the current meta. For example, some of the things we run into with dual Provost handguns, and I want to pass uh, the dice to Sash a bit here, uh, just to not just expound on some of these ideas too, about what we have, you know, in terms of defenses and what we run into, but how relevant those things are as opposed to uh, some of the stronger weapons we run into and some of the current things in the meta. Yeah, well, you referenced metagame there. Well, we, we're still in the honeymoon period for, for Verdict Day. We really don't know how the meta is going to develop. I mean, certainly at the moment we have everybody running very high DPS weapons mm-hmm. and not really taking too much advantage of armor break, mm-hmm. which was a big thing in five because there was such a, a narrow amount of, of parts that could be used to, to attack you and to defend yourself with, mm-hmm. you know, you have, if, if you want to make a friend that buffs out certain things, you're going to have certain other defenses that go along with that. Like if you're a midway and you want to buff out PMG, mm-hmm. well, we can assume that you're not buffing out battle rifles which, of course, Battle Rifles had very high attack power to begin with. But uh, here in, in Verdict Day now, we have so many other different attacking weapons now in the CE category, like CE machine guns, which yeah. I did I definitely did not expect them to hit over 1,000 attack power, which they do now. And it's honestly a struggle to, uh, yeah. to buff out everything in every category that you would like to buff out. And... Not to say that there's there's much of a rock paper scissors standpoint still, right? But just because there's such a variety of, of frame parts that you can put together to get whatever defense thresholds that you want, it makes it a real challenge to preserve some of the the integral features of your design. Like for me, I would like to use a high camera head mm-hmm. with a wide angle FCS, like Yasa County, which of course the name has been changed, so I don't even know what it is now. Right. And I'd like to put I this you know, I hate the barcode names, yeah. yeah. And I'd like to put rapid fire turn soul on, uh, for instance, spear mm-hmm. you know, for the fire build, and that'll be that's that'll be just something that I want to put together. That'll be something that I want to base my frame around. Right, right, right. Well, innately we have an issue with spear not having the defenses in the CE category that I would like to buff out the two big powerful CE Gs. Certainly, I could put on a, a CE core and get that up there, mm-hmm. but. 
I could retrofit that CE cord, have a little bit more TE defense, but now I can't fit missiles on because I'm too heavy. Yep. It, it's, it's almost a nightmare now to look at it from a very technical standpoint. I mean, sure, you can just build a very defensive frame, but the issue nowadays is that we don't know precisely what to put on. You know, right. for, uh, for, for five, for example, we can just say, oh, yeah, just toss on like Amos Arms and a TE uh, core and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But now we have to worry about all sorts of other defenses that need to be, all these the defense thresholds that need to be met. And the consequences in this case, since everybody's running such high DPS weapons, you can have something that if you're weak to any one particular weapon, you're you're down. Like you're you're taking very devastating amounts of damage very quickly. And do you think this was by design? I I feel that this is definitely by design by From to make, I guess, a more of a a varied playing field. Like we see all walks of weapons, definitely like in KE and C E and T E, there's just so many different weapons now that have so many different features and they're all very, very versatile. Like for example, there's a there's gas that when when you spec them for accuracy reach out like sniper rifles, like laser beams. Mm-hmm. And we have the rapid fire turn assault, which doesn't lose any power. And it handles like, you know <laughs> I almost want to say it handles like a, a USG, classic USG. Right, right. But at the same time we have Provos, which have ungodly muzzle velocity and crazy accuracy and good power and great reload, great weight, but you know, what else can you do with these? We have so many different possible combinations at this point, as well as all these modified parts that we can streamline our defenses with, as you say, which if we had just the, the streamlined part design mechanics in five, it, mm-hmm. it would be a completely different thing. It'd be very easy. We'd say, all right, great. I have my personalized build. It won't look at all similar to somebody else's so I can get all the defenses that I want. It'll be perfectly fine. But in V-Day now, it is very, very difficult to buff out everything that you would want to buff out. And buff out, of course, is reaching that defense threshold. Well, and you almost you almost can't get a build that will buff out everything, which was certainly a part of the thing in, uh, in 5. But now with the DPS weapons, uh, it's just these, these very, very technical little amounts of defenses that you have to balance your mobility as well with. And it's just, it's a handful to do. Right, right. And well, you know, I, I think another wild card that's thrown into that, what you have, is uh, your tuning specs uh, with said weapons, too. You know, it's interesting. Like, uh, Provost, if you were to 300 tune that, e.g., you know, 3-spec into power, you get about a bit over 840 or so muzzle velocity out of that as a change yes. from, it used to, add, you know, the change from, like, the original 700 or not. So even though you only have those, like, three points in tuning, right, you know, those three categories, I mean, they still count for a lot, and they can drastically shift the properties of said weapon depending um, on how they're used. I, I think it's an important point you bring up, um, and to, this is a common goof I always make, and when I'm speaking about these kind of things, uh, that the meta has a lot of work to be defined still. It's not a defined thing. If anything, it's almost like a primordial meta. Um, in a sense, uh, we have you know a lot of these different combinations and weapons being tried right now. A lot of exercises and things, and you know the successful weapons that you know deal damage at a really quick rate, you know tend to catch on a little quicker. Now, some of these you know are being addressed uh, pretty rapidly. You know the patch that just dropped on uh, Xbox today, uh, the Provost was part of part of that chain of uh, nerfs, if anything. And um, you know some of these things will be caught immediately. You know in a patch of the first things. Uh, others. Others, I think, might have a little bit more room to grow, a little bit more room to expand still. Um, but this is one of those cases, I think, uh, for your defenses especially. Uh, your mobility and your stability is going to play a great part in this too. As you know, as we're going in, into this, yeah, it's difficult to get you know, your favorite light design walking around as a heavyweight with every ideal threshold you could ask for in the world. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, but I think the type of support package you bring in your design and that also goes all the way down, I think, to the, the boost level. And, you know, moving with, you know, good movement with your drift turns and whatnot and trying to use your energy as efficiently as possible. And most importantly, using your cover, too, to really look out for some of those key threats that might, you know, bring a lot against your defenses. That's that's an important thing as well. Yeah, that's certainly a big thing, a, a big part of it is it's not just defenses anymore. It's, I mean, you may have noticed if you played Verdict Day now that a lot of the maps are very, very open. There's not a lot of cover-to-cover engagements. We have more FaceTime, as we call it, FaceTime engagements, where it's face-to-face. We are hope- holding down triggers, you know, dumping lead on each other. And what the outcome of that is determined by? Well, it's any number of things. We have people that can 
work off of the, the stone generator have a huge yen pool to work off of mm-hmm. will boost around you but there's lightweights now that have incredible incredible speeds because of this new token also booster and it's 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 very much a primordial meta in which we you may be using the same weapons as me but i haven't the slightest clue what your tunings are for them right and couple that with the barcode numbers uh <laughs> I don't even know what the hell you're using. If I scan you, I just see the the, the attack values. I'm like, well, I guess what kind of weapon is that? I don't know. I see CE 500. Okay, I guess you're using a CEMG. Yeah, and that uh, that 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 definitely brings something out about what, what you said just a moment ago too about uh, your scan. You know, the importance of having a, a quicker scan you know, in your head in combination you know, with your recons and whatnot. Um, getting that that initial value of not just what your opponent's defenses are looking like, but a, a quick spec at what they have. Uh, I, I've been terribly thrown off with this. You know, it was easy in the past when you could, you know, look and immediately identify USG 23H or if someone was using, you know, st- uh, Stracota, Stracosas or Lotus or whatever type of loadout or major thing to look for. I, I don't have any of these other names in my head right now. I tend to refer to them myself by their vanilla names. I'm trying to get those down as quick as possible. But um, I think that's a real key uh, in some of these things, in some of these factors, you know, identifying what you're up against first to know, well, frankly, you know, not just how to react, but how is your design going to respond on the field uh, to that threat? You know, it's easy to run in and say, oh, they have these set defenses, I'll run in with you, and then you don't, you have no idea what the weapon loadout actually was <laughs> until you start getting hit by it. So, yeah, precisely. Part of it's going to be memorization. We all got to grow back into this as a community. Thanks for throwing a wrench from. Uh, part of it, I think, will be uh, just honestly just field testing and battle testing um, with a lot of things that have to come out because there's still some definitions out there that really got to be defined. And it, th- this is when AC is in a really fun state. You know, we're right at the apex of early patches. Um, the book's been unwritten or not been fully written yet in a lot of these things, and there's just much to see on it. Yeah, it's really an open book at this point because, I mean, I see the AU prefix and I'm like, well, okay, what does this mean? Yeah. Well, it could either be like a battle rifle or rifle, you know, a laser rifle. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything now. It's the specific chain of numbers that come after that now. Right. And we can see this in, in five to an extent with like USG, UPG, but generally we could figure out what the heck that meant. Like plasma gun, Gatling gun, shotgun. It's not that confusing. Right. Like you could even just refer to things as like UBR for battle rifle. But now we have... It just took complete barcodes, as it's called. We, we we have no idea what kind of weapon we're using until we're getting hit by it, precisely. And, you know, I, I want to compare and contrast that real quick to the traditional naming convention changes we had in AC's past. You know, and the, the core that always comes to mind for me was the uh, the MOB, the Mo- a, a.k.a. Mob Corps, in the Mirage OB, uh, but specifically the uh, Ray, the MCLSS Ray, and that originally came out in Silent Line. You know, it was one of the one of the quickest OB cores you had with some of the best thrust, but it was renamed to the Helios in the later versions. Now, we didn't get a really complicated barcode for that. If anything, we had a lot of astrological um, you know, formations and different things like that to name parts, but it was easy to keep in your head. You know, it wasn't a problem, and you saw, oh, yeah, that correlates to that look. Yeah, I got that. And, uh, it wasn't too difficult to map. I'm not too certain why the change went like that for Verdict Day with, with the number and lettering conventions so specific and just jumbled. Um, I would have wished it would have been something simpler, followed like a mythological pattern like they did in the past, but uh, no, it's it's going to cause all kinds of wrenches now. Yeah, it certainly will. I almost want to undergo a personal quest to just rename all the damn weapons, but <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, of course. It is. I- I think, I think it would be really interesting to find out how exactly they did name these things. And I, actually, something uh, that may be revealed in the story uh, for Verdict Day, which is kind of funny, that the story would actually have some meaning where they say that, um, you know, ACs were found and they were backwards en- engineered to make new parts. And I'm wondering if that doesn't have some kind of actual uh, importance as to why they named things the way they did. Yeah, right. Well, one thing that I, I hit on immediately when I saw my, my parts that were you know, untuned and transferred over in the verdict day was that it said mass-produced part. Yeah. And I immediately thought, you know, what? <laughs> you know, what does this mean? Is this like, are my old ACs now outdated? You know, what does this mean? And their barcode numbers? Is this like some kind of serial weapon or whatever? Like, it feels like it was just, you know, straight out of the gunsmith saying, all right, cool, here's your... AUVG816, whatever thing. <laughs> you know, have fun. I'd be like, okay, whatever. Right. Man, but 
you know, I think regardless of, of naming schemes, um, you know, as we find more out about the various weapons and different setups and, and the designs and what works and, you know, what doesn't, as we kind of uh, hash those things out, that all funnels back into, you know, this idea of uh, inf info communication, you know, how that's done within teams, uh, how that's done uh, between the community. And, you know, again, we have your little sh your sharing forums and uh, various topics and threads that will, you know, point to certain aspects about it. But, you know, at the, at the end, it's really going to come down to, I think, what we choose to generate and what we choose uh, to share. Now, I, I can talk about this from a, a personal perspective of how community information sharing has helped me as a player um, in the past. And I think the perfect example of that was like mastering how to uh, slide jump and understanding how stationary to moving energy drain worked, what those ratios meant, and what would happen specifically when you sent your AC into a slide, the different properties they'd have. That wasn't something that was generated by myself. Like, I, I stumbled upon the movement when I found it initially, but that was refined both through forums and playing others. And without those experiences, I would not have gained as full an understanding as I had of that by the end of, you know, the older era of AC. And I think that's going to apply here, too. Um, I, I, arguably, you know, we've had other members point at this, you know, even always got like, you know, made a post, uh, you know, just one in competition and whatnot. Well, I think a really important thing with that would be you know, that information, having things available, you know, sharing what we can and what we've learned and seeing as Avenger made in his post, seeing who can take advantage of that information the best, who can leverage that information the best and who can make some of the greatest tactics out of it. I think you're going to have a stronger community. I think you're going to have a stronger competitive base. And at the end of it, that's what we're all going to want. Yeah, that's completely the case is that when we all figure out, you know, to the best of our ability, how to utilize some of these things that we've gotten in these games, it, it makes such a, a incredibly creative community that we can work with and we can compete with each other and, there's just there's really no no limit to the extent of what we can pull off with all these crazy designs. Like, mm -hmm. uh, for example, b the concept of blue logging, mm -hmm. where you're you're disregarding subcomputers for the use of sniper rifles and other long lock time weapons, mm -hmm. and you can pull absolutely ridiculous combinations out of that, like <laughs> foregoing the oxide, which is a reliable form of stagger, and going with a Zlatko, in my case, which is a very powerful sniper with a very long reload time and a very long lock time, mm -hmm. but Impact force rivaling that of the oxide, and pair that with you know a high DPS weapon like we would nowadays, and you'd have armor break with uh, a huge starting lump of damage, yep. and then you could finish that off and disengage, and you wouldn't need subcomputers. So now we're rocking cues, and we don't need to worry about missiles. Yeah. And that's crazy. Like once certainly you can play against it, you can use it, and then people will catch on and say, "Hey, that's a really cool concept." Right, right. The, the funny thing about this, I, I you know, bet a silver dollar on it. What people are going to see is as these things get unlocked, these are patterns that have been found and that have happened in Armored Core's past already um, and that you will see reemerge in a way. You know, the immediate uh, notes about, you know, your reload and especially like the Oxide Sniper reminds me of the case with uh, Wyrm. Uh, you know, a lot of you remember that back from NX as a very hard-hitting sniper. And while we obviously didn't have the same type of stagger back then, it was used for a very, very similar strategy. You know, uh, at the end of the day, we have so many categories in Armored Core that have remained the same over time. You know, and as a result of that, too, regardless of the patching, regardless of how things come out, uh, many of these same ways to pair these weapons, I think, keep a certain balance. And they keep a certain uh, static ability to use them. And so, you know, finding the best combinations and the ways to do it, and that's part of that's down the road and some of the things you'll unlock, but, uh, but it's there. And I think it's a kind of interesting pattern with the series, you know, and that, that goes beyond just something you normally see with storyline and everything. I mean, this is down to the design. I mean, you know, AC at the heart of it is customization and that customization uh, lies not only in your build, but how you choose to utilize that build. And the more knowledge you have about those parts specifically, how they interact with your design and how they're going to interact with your field condition does nothing but just, you know, bolster what you're going to bring to the table. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's, it's how you use your AC, how you build it, but it's also how it feels, you know, like mm. I pair a, a rapid fire weapon with you know, high stability arm and I'm thinking like, Oh my gosh, this is really cool. I yeah. love how these bullets are coming out so fast. When I discovered firing stability in five, for example, I just built the, an HRJ right off the bat and started using like howitzers and hilarious combinations of weapons just 
enjoying to see the bullets fly. I, I, and I, I now got, it's I, a more experience. So, I, I, I got to ask within that, with, with uh, HRJs, uh, what, was, what was the arm set that really took off with you? Did you jump on with Severe or did you take something else? Um, well, yeah, I, I definitely did Sphere, but Narva was also a good case, which is the first gen version of Sphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that's in, in this game, actually in, in V day, uh, Narva has higher firing stability than Sphere, mm -hmm. but Sphere has less drain, oddly enough. So I prefer less drain parts. <laughs> Ditto. I, I think you say the same for a lot of people. That, that's the funniest thing about some of the frames. You know, most of these parts have maintained their base integrity or what made them what we were like or what they were rather and why we picked up said part but i think they've been modified in such a way and just tweaked to where they leave a more viable option in some case you know an even option or just just to allow you to get outside of that specific frame you know it, as we highlighted our last podcast you know one thing you might notice if you're just loading up verdict day for the first time uh, especially if you're importing is you'll take your exact same frame over from five, but you'll have different values, you know, as far as like your, your AP and you know, your defenses or whatnot. And this is, a, that's a literal thing. Um, personally, I'm really glad that those options are expanded and we're going to get a chance to see, uh, to see some of those things develop, some of those things grow. But uh, overall, overall though, I, 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 w I want to say that, besides giving us more options and giving us more ways i think to use those parts in our acs that hopefully we'll get more ways to uh couple that with the loadout and a decent loadout you know you, you look at the missiles and what we have now too you know uh, talking about our old loadouts for, for close range missing with the mathura um then you know deem poor mids that we had in the past you know for our ce missiles and everything um that's going to be a huge part of the whole equation not just to weight ratios how you assemble your entire ac but your loadout and what you can bring to bear um, and it's a really tedious balance, especially if you're trying to use like uh, a lightweight, uh, which, you know, we're obviously extremely quick right now and have great mobility, great features. But again, you want to achieve, you know, some generator for well, some cases, you know, you want really good energy or uh, you want to instead balance more towards a better weapon loadout. It, it's a bit of a tightrope to walk. I don't know if I don't think some of the heavies have to worry about that as much. But uh, there's just options galore. And everybody that asked me about Verdict Day, you know, what's worth picking up about this if, if I were, you know, trying to enjoy this? What's, what's worth really getting it for? I said, well, if you enjoyed 5, this has greater customization than 5. I mean, I think that's a pretty base truth of it. And hopefully, if From handles this right, that should do nothing but expand through some of the patches. So, Yeah, we should definitely hope so on that. But uh, we, we, we did just cover a little bit about, uh, you know, Ranging from lights to heavies on what your loadout has to be. Yeah. And just the other night, uh, you know, I was talking with a few people on the ACL Skype chat, and you know, we we decided to compare lightweight and first joint builds mm -hmm. on the same legs, running more or less the same, uh, you know, the same general idea, mm -hmm. and we came out within one or two points of boost uh, difference between each other with vastly, vastly different loadouts. Hmm. and roughly the same uh, defenses, even though we had completely different frames. And we just, we were stumped by that. And like, how could that possibly occur? In five, you couldn't get anywhere close to having identical ACs, or at least stat-wise, with, you know, the same parts, or with, with different parts, that is. No. And that's very much the case uh, with, I mean, it's, for example, how uh, stability was changed, or recoil resistance, that is, is now it's based on weight, so you're more prompted to fill up the space on your AC's legs. Right, right. And that's it's it's a totally different change now. Is that for heavies now you want to fill up that capacity? You've mentioned that they don't really have to worry about that as much. Well, if they want to not get staggered, they certainly do. Well, that 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 highlights another thing. Um, uh, not not just about weight ratios too. You know, I'm thinking back to FA where we had stabilizers and whatnot. You know, depending on which way you loaded. Uh, oh yeah, don't remind me. Yeah, you know, help determine some of your speed and whatnot. But no, as we're saying, you know, filling up, uh, filling up weight to uh, help determine how much stab uh, you have, or uh, you know, how how balanced your your design is going to be. And I think part of it too comes down to really recognizing what types of weapons are going to be able to put you know a huge cap you know on, on your stagger or whatnot, or what's going to nail you. I mean, you know, your your snipers and whatnot still hit hard, but there's there's plenty of more threats. Um, while I think that I think it does stand true that by I mean heavies don't have to look at that uh, the weight ratios are still important, but as far as what they're loading on their AC as much, uh, but for for stagger's sake, yeah, 
were saying, they, they do have to fill out more. You know, you may as well round out your build instead of, you know, rendering uh, heavy, 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 you know, underweighting. You know, see what else you can pack on, see what else you can buffer out your design with. What I am curious about in that experiment you mentioned, though, was how many of those individuals were using retrofit parts and how many were using normal mass produced? Yeah, we were both using retrofit, I think, on every single on, part. On everything? Okay. On everything, yeah. It was all the, those little tiny, tiny, minute little differences in stats. Yeah. They make a huge difference later on down the line. Like even just changing uh, my core around on my very classic uh, heavyweight build, I suddenly had, you know, I, I buffed out to the 1505 mark and I was like, oh my good I'm like, wow, right, right. <laughs> I'm free to use CE arms now. This is crazy. Wow. And that just, that opens up so many different doors for people. And, you know, it's sort of harkening back to our, our little bit of talk on defenses mm -hmm. is that we can, there's so many different ways that we can achieve those thresholds. Yeah. And that just opens up, that opens the doors for so many different combinations of weapons as well. And I feel like, this game is almost going to be harder once you get the initial learning curve to figure out what the heck you're doing when you're building your IC. Yeah. You know, uh, there's some things that are still really odd. You know, we, we spoke about, uh, you know, I know you're a fan of the, the, the Vendettas. We spoke about, you know, weapon arms a little earlier. And um, I'm interested to see how they're going to play into things in the long run, too. You know, we don't have any notes about them, you know, in the current patch. But, you know, th there have just been a couple of oddities I noticed that emerged. You know, you have the classic Lotus. Again, I have no idea what it's called now. Um, I was kind of amazed that uh, those, that, that the Lotus itself beat the uh, PO-8, the uh, C weapon arm, like in terms of velocity, like just, just the raw shell, you know, without, like, tunes. Like, that's really interesting to me. Like, in the past... A lot of the weapon arms, specifically like you know the grenade arms, I'll take those for example. You know they were normally the top end of their class in terms of damage. Now, obviously not defenses. You know you're going to be sack sacking a ton of defense to use these things, and I think that's the obviously the case you have in Verdict Day as well. But the fact that there are still some rifles, you know specifically, you know when I'm comparing Lotus and PO8 here, that will have an advantage over a weapon arm um, in that regard, and that's. Uh, that's wild, you know, and I'm, I was kind of, I was a little miffed by that, too. I'm like, well, you know, these feel like huge battle rifles anyway, right? If, if I'm borrowing this, if I'm going to use this part of my AC, I, I kind of feel like I'm looking for the, the cream of the crop for this for this style of firing. And, you know, uh, maybe that's a little narrow to do because, you know, you won't get that in every respect and every aspect. But you still have little differences like that out there if you're really comparing and looking. So, um I just encourage anybody that's, that's designing, if you come across those things and find those cases where you think it'd be better to try and hit a threshold to go with uh, weapons you can mount via hands instead of a weapon arm combination, it, it's something to consider and something to look at closely. Yeah, actually, I think I take a completely different perspective when I look at weapon arms, mm -hmm. uh, is that it's not hand weapons that weapon arms are, are trying to emulate. It's mm -hmm. these ready position weapons that we find on tanks and quads. Like, you know, these weapon arms, they're, they're not battle rifles, they're heat cannons. Right. You see, they're, they're absolutely devastating. We have full scans, we have sniper cannons. These are typically weapons that we could not use on our, our mids and our lights and our, our heavies, you know. And while it is a, a big sacrifice to defense, we get a huge amount of firepower. Yeah. You know, just we can't compare to hand weapons. Right, right. You know, one of those things too is and it's funny how i tend to think about part classes as, as a as a jump it could be just because of the way the round itself functions or uh the said velocity of the round or like the size of the round but i i tend to make a correlation between the two but the reason i i tend to pair uh some of those together especially you know looking at lotus between some of the, the rest of the c weapons is when it when it comes to the end the the end of it you know if you especially if you're looking for a certain c assault you're looking for uh, hopefully the best way you can package that on your design. Maybe that's you want to achieve a defensive instead. Maybe you just want to hit as hard as you possibly could with that. And I think some players may find though that needs some more work before they do it, or they might, you know, not quite want to use said combination. They might find something better in weapon arms first. You know, just use your cannons, or they may not. You know, uh, you look at the, uh, the the valiant. You know, our sniper cannon that we have, or our new laser cannon and whatnot. I mean, those are uh, great examples of things that you would traditionally have to go into a neo for. And now you have a very mobile way to do that kick. I'm still waiting to see some valiant specialist. Um, that looks like a blast and a lot of fun to really land if someone could uh, truly perfect a uh, way to mount that on a build. But maybe that's for another hour. Yeah, but maybe for another hour, indeed. Yeah. Uh, 
If you say Valiant, I say Vampire because it's cooler than the left hand. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, on that note, the mobility aspect of adding weapon arms to the game is just, you know, you don't have to kneel down to hold down an area with a sniper right. cannon. Right. I mean, sure, sure, you don't have the zoom, but if you're using it in a tunnel and you have, like, the three-shot weapon arm yep. with the, you know, the sniper cannon, nobody's getting through that tunnel because you can move out of the way if they want to sit up. And if they're coming in that tunnel, you can pound away at them with a high-power weapon. And, of course, with these, the addition of, like, cannon-class firepower to you know, midweights mm-hmm. is that I can I can further specialize in AC. Mm-hmm. I can run with you know a shotgun and a handgun, which wouldn't be effective at all on covering the meta normally. Mm-hmm. But if I specialize my handset to take care of like tanks and quads, right, or rather tanks and heavies, and then rack the pulse gun arms, I'm perfectly set. You know, <laughs> I can cover all kinds of things. Of course, my mobility and my armor will take a hit, but does that really matter to me when I can? Blow you away in seconds. <laughs> right, right. Good stuff. So, it, and I had a note. I had. A, I just had a note from Tiersen here. I think, uh, as far as where we're sitting, uh, time wise, I kind of want to carry this into a second segment. I almost feel like we we just hit you know the first half almost what we want to talk about, but um, I know we're probably going to have to put a cap and. Uh, Wait, that. what's going on? <laughs> look at look at this guy. <laughs> you fell back. asleep over there, taking a nap. <laughs> look, <laughs> no, no, yeah, we are getting closer to an hour, but. Uh... Uh, Sash, you, you have been a great guest, and uh, again, uh, I would like to I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, I mean, these guys, like I said, you know, before we were recording and such, I mean, these, these guys have a great conversation about this stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, we are, we're getting close to an hour at this point for this week. Mm-hmm. I, I think, if anything, um, something we can take away from all this, and we, we've touched on a lot of things, you know, the, the developing tactics and, you know, what we're going to see coming out of, you know, AC patches and so on and so forth, but um, it comes down to, I think, how we're going to handle things, not only in our teams, but in the community at large. You know, we got we got some projects that are happening right in ACL um, to help compile some of this information and help boost things and, you know, get, get them out to players. I've seen some, you know, threads that are posted other places that have been brought to ACL. Uh, you know, Sash, I believe you helped port over the topic that was on reaching perfection uh, regarding uh, usage of uh, usage of parts or uh, some of the more popular things people like to use or just to talk about some of the current things that are happening in Verdict Day. You know, that's great. You know, and you can go to either spot and you can see kind of separate spheres of discussion. Um, and I just think as time goes on, these things will converge, these things will pull. But uh, it's important just for our player base to, I think, to have that type of information out there and to... Uh, have the ability to share these things so we'll see there's going to be a lot of initiatives for it um, if any of you are huge theory crafters if you love doing your specific number crunching and we've had some great tests in the past you know uh, berserk dragon posted some great results uh, regarding defenses at one point um, but if any of you want to offer any of those things or you're kind of you know, a little nervous around the corner you don't quite want to you know post things uh, by all means you know we encourage you, you know, come on out contribute those things you know we'll talk through them we'll knock the kinks out of them if we have to and Hopefully through that, we can get a really nice cohesive piece that all of us can use and borrow from, and that will get stickied in Thread. So. Yeah, definitely. I think one, one real quick point that I want to make is yeah. an informed community that knows how to play the game, knows what's going to go on, mm-hmm. you know, how to build an AC, how to you know, fight, how to you know, get their weapons right, is yeah. going to be less cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> Which I know that turns off a lot of players when they see, oh no, dual land, dual sawa, what can I do against this? Well, I mean, you really can't, but if that person knew, you know, alternatives to that, they would probably use it. It's, I wouldn't say there's, there's crutches, but there certainly are ways to get advantages over other people very easily. Sure. I think even if you go and check out some of the members in our community who stream, you know, if, especially if they have, you know, their voice chat live and whatnot, um, there was some of Godly's or uh, perfection, some of his videos I was flicking back through uh, a few days ago, even one today, um, in a lot of cases, it's sometimes it's because people just don't look at forums or just don't look at the community. But in a lot of cases, uh, there's just uh, it's even whole classes of weapons and things people just don't know about. Like um, someone GP was playing was completely stunned at one point when he was using sniper rifles. I mean, he had no idea what they were. Um, essentially, he was running on you know, the dual dual USG 23H with flashes and so much that you know we've seen earlier. This was early AC5, but um, that's just that really just interested me that someone could be completely stunned and have like no idea what a weapon category could be because they're so narrowed on something that has worked on something that's just specific and they see it spread across tons of designs and they go with that as well. 
So educate, educate, educate. Definitely. Well, um, I, I think that's a good point to, to stop here then tonight. Good deal. Um, and Sash, thank you again for coming on. Thank you. No, thanks for having me. Great, uh, great conversation about, uh, about the combat and access of the game. That was perfect. Um, okay. Well, then, uh, I think I'll do the, the usual plug for, uh, for us, uh, again. You didn't hear it at the beginning of the show. Go to armrecordlegacy.com. Uh, the most active forums for armrecord going right now. And, um, actually, I think that'll do it. Uh, you know, it, it, the rest of the stuff is over on the front end of the show. So, um, all right. Stay tuned, and we will catch you next week. Take care, everyone. Thanks. See you later.